What's going on YouTube, it's Flight Hero. I'm gonna just do a quick breakdown of my F-14. Talk about all the details on it and all the systems on board and uh, go from there. I've been getting quite a few questions about this jet in general uh, and all the different things I have on here. Uh, this was probably uh, one of my most expensive <laughs> uh, projects I've ever done in the RC community, uh, or at least in my RC time. So uh, stay tuned, I'll break down some prices for you at the end as well. So we're going to start with the paint scheme. This paint scheme is from VF-103, Jolly Roger, uh, Lovis, Victory 1-2, Jet 101. I don't have the bureau number right, so if you guys are uh, deep into the scale part of the uh, this hobby, this is the bureau number for uh, VF-2 Jet. So don't kill me, but I, don't, I, ne I didn't go back and cover that over. Um, anyway, this, uh, this paint scheme... Uh, it's it's the, the the it's pretty uh, detailed. Well, relatively speaking, but uh, the skull and crossbones were stenciled on by me. Um, I just went ahead and cut out a a picture and put it on the jet. Spray painted it on there. It came out pretty nice. Um, let's see. This the the striping was done. Also, it took a couple tries, as you can see, to get that right. But um, came out pretty nice. And each side has a skull and crossbones on the nose and on the vertical stabilizer, as well as the striping on each side. All right, next we're going to talk about the hardware. So aftermarket hardware for sure when it comes to the landing gear. This is a T45 Gosok, uh, Gosok strut from Freewing. It's just plops right in there like the RC Geek talks about. Um, I haven't had any issues with the, with the bending or being weaker, but I do fly FPV, so... Uh, my landings aren't terrible. They aren't great, but they're not terrible. So uh, about 30 plus landings on this thing and haven't had any issues with that. Now the mains are a different story. These mains are actually, uh, they've been swapped out and they're not stock mains. These are the Freewing MiG-29 main landing gear. And uh, they are set with a pair of Robart 3.0 tires to give it a more scale look and to help absorb those rougher touchdowns, control crashes as we like to say in the Navy, right? So. Those are on there. Definitely took a lot of work to get that done. Uh, with that being said, I also reinforced the entire landing nacelle area. Just the entire area. I'll kind of zoom in, talk about this. If you can kind of see what I'm talking about. That whole area has been reinforced with uh, a sheet of fiberglass and epoxy resin, boat epoxy resin. So it's nice and hard. It doesn't, it's not gonna give any, not gonna give way at all uh, to make it more sturdy for um, some of these landings so the foam doesn't compress into the uh, to the aircraft. Now, that being said, underneath the wing cover, which is very uh, <laughs> jacked up, but underneath the wing cover there's also a sheet on top as well as uh, some metal plating that I made myself. I didn't get the aftermarket metal plating, just thought I could do it myself a little bit better. And uh, it works out pretty well. Um, definitely took a while. That being said, these are since these are the rotating landing gear, they do actually go up into the aircraft. Um, it's not the most scale thing ever, but it's a little bit nicer looking than watching those gear just sit, um, you know, straight up and down. So I did take the time to do that. It was a pain in the butt, but it works. Um, so I'm going to leave that there. All right, next we have the drop tanks. These are from the RC Geek. I painted them, covered them polyacrylic, and uh, did the scale detailing for uh, VF-103's drop tanks. So. That's just a little nice touch there. It does add a bit of drag, but you know it's worth it in my opinion. I've got pretty, a pretty powerful aftermarket um, fan system in there, so I'll talk about that next. But those drop tanks both can come off. Uh, and I'll show, they're on there right now. I'll just show what it looks like off in a sec. All right, so now it's off. Uh, this is the right drop, or left drop tank. It's off, as you can see. It's a little bit beat up. Uh, looks cracked, but those cracks are filled in with glue. So um, solid, solid piece. Um, took an old AIM-9 and I uh, put that secure piece on there, glued it in place with some uh, Gorilla Glue, and then also took one of the recess points off of my, uh, one of the F-16, the F-16 I have, and kind of set it in there and it works out pretty well. Um, but yeah, these drop tanks are removable, um, and since I have done a lot of modifications for it, I'm planning to fly them without the drop tanks. Or fly jet without the drop tanks just to see, like, you know, to get myself up in the air, make sure everything works properly. So, we did add about half a pound of weight um, to the jet since last weigh in. So, 
Uh, I'm going to talk about the power system next. Okay, so the power system is going to be a set of XFly 2200 KV EDF uh, fans, 12 blade, uh, I think 10, 10 or 12 blade fans. I don't feel like counting them right now. Uh, that provides about 3,400 grams of thrust, uh, which is about six pounds, seven pounds, somewhere around there, thrust per fan. Uh, when the fans are actually installed in the jet, they only produce about 3.0, 2.9, somewhere around there, kilograms of thrust. But that's plenty, plenty of thrust, more than enough to get this jet airborne. Um, last weigh-in the jet was about 15 and a half pounds, so uh, definitely has gained some weight since the stock figure of uh, 12 pounds, but. It definitely flies. Uh, so I do use a set of uh, 100 amp ESCs found on the Freewing A10. So those are uh, pretty pretty nice, reliable ESCs. I haven't had any issues with that. And then the battery itself, their HRB 6050Cs, um, gives about three and a half, four minutes of flight time. Um, if you're really ripping around, you're gonna probably get about two and a half minutes, but uh, realistically, uh, it's, it's pretty decent. If you run this thing down all the way to low voltage cutoff, you, uh, with you know conservative throttle, you will get about six minutes, fifty seconds uh, before you hit low voltage cutoff. So it's flying forty five second uh, max climb out, and uh, max max power climb out, and a uh, everything else just sitting around sixty percent for power for the flight. So six six minutes, fifty seconds where you can push it, but for me it's about four minutes. So I'm gonna start talking about the FPV gear, and we'll get begin to wrap this up. Okay, so for starters, this FPV uh, setup. Is basically designed around the real F-14 Bravo uh, flight control setup. Uh, first things first, the display. I wrote the Code 4 program myself and installed underneath an overlay of an F-14B cockpit. Uh, at the top, you got airspeed, miles an hour, altitude, uh, and feet on the second one below, and then the number of GPS connections. So the number of GPS satellites that the uh, aircraft, or the, excuse me, the GPS has on board or has registered. So anything below 10, you're not gonna really get an accurate GPS reading, but anything a 10 and above uh, just tells you it's gonna be a little bit more accurate. It's locked in, uh, clock speed's about one second. So every second, roughly everything updates, uh, which is a little slow, but you know, for now, that's what we got. Um, we're moving over to a Teensy board setup for these uh, displays, but more on that later. So we have the DJI 03 Ariant on a Motion 6 BAG a gimbal. Uh, this gimbal's very reliable. It's very, uh, very dynamic and pan about 280 degrees uh, either side. So it's pretty, uh, pretty good. I can see behind me. I can see my uh, elevators and uh, spoilers moving around my jet when I'm flying. So uh, really fast. Definitely quick uh, as far as responsiveness. Uh, so that way you're not lagging behind the aircraft. On top of the air unit itself, you have a Protec fan which runs at all times. Um, doesn't really pull that much off the battery. I've been sitting here for about 15 minutes and my battery voltage is still showing 25.1. More on this in a second. Um, but anyway, so you got your airspeed, your, your airspeed and altitude display, right, on a DJI 03. So no no blurry, uh, no, no flickering or anything like that on, on the 03 either. And then we have a landing gear position light. That was a recent install tells you where, what position to land you're in. That way, if you get a little bit behind the plane coming in to land, you can see, hey, you know, my gear is still probably up. All right. That being said, behind there is obviously the antenna, so you get, you know, some good signal. Right now, I don't have the jet set up for max range, so you get about a mile of range with my setup right now, but you can easily push this up to six miles of range if you have an Arduino or a uh, flight controller, which I don't yet, but that's probably gonna be coming in the short term. All right, so let's move on to the backseat, the Rio. So this has been the talk of late. This uh, system uses a, again, another DJI Air, uh, 03 air unit. And it is actually set up on the RC UX F14 uh, Bravo um, ejection seat. I did a lot of modifications to get this to fit, but it fits. And then we have another fan that's not on because the pilot flight control system is totally separate on a totally separate transmitter from the Rio flight control system. Um, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But this fan back here is what keeps the Rio air unit cool. And then sticking out the top is the Rio's antenna. Not scale, but definitely makes the, uh, the reception easier. And so the Rio, their job is to basically drop bombs. There is a display screen back there. It's not powered on because it's on a separate receiver. 
and, um, and transmitter, so it's not turned on right now, but um, the behind here, that display is actually connected to this forward-looking infrared pod, which is the next topic. Um, this forward-looking infrared pod is a uh, basically another, it's an analog FPV camera connected to a highly modified Black Star uh, gimbal. Since Black Star's gimbal doesn't have the range of motion uh, the uh, motion stick gimbal has, I just felt like it would be a better gimbal suit for this sort of roll. You can look down, you can look up, you can roll to the side. It's pretty versatile, uh, but it works for my applications, right? So this will allow whoever's in the back seat to see in front of the aircraft where, as they may have an obstruction, obviously, with that front seat here and the antenna. All right, and that underneath here is going to be then connected for the Rio setup is connected to the bombs. These bombs are free fall bombs for now. However, with an IR laser, which I'm working on right now, IR laser, and an Arduino programmed IR receptacle or sensor, you can. The plan is to make this capable of uh, dropping laser guided bombs. So uh, there's a lot that's going to have to go into that, but it shouldn't be the hardest thing I've ever done with RCE aircraft. Um, that is still the artificial horizon which I have. I'm in the works of, and same with the heads-up display, but working on that as we go. All right, one of the last things we're going to talk about here for the Rio, since I don't have space in the front to monitor my voltage to really get a feel for where my battery life is, other than a timer, I have a voltage meter for the Rio. So all he has to do is look over to his right and look down, and he can read off the voltage. So our bingo is going to be about 21 volts, 20 to 21 volts. So if we start getting down there, uh, consistently at a 60% power setting for longer than 10 seconds. That's how we know it's time to land. <clears throat> and uh, that's basically it. The F-14. Uh, it's uh, it's been a pretty nice project for the last couple of years. Um, there's still a lot of upgrades that I'm going to eventually do to this thing, like a heads-up display that works for artificial horizon, um, laser guided bombs, as mentioned before, and I'm working on a system that'll allow me to get longer flight times. And I can't really talk about it now, but once I get the patent. We'll, uh, I'll, I'll share it eventually. Um, we're going to do a quick wing opening to talk about the flight control logic and then talk about these bombs as well. So, uh, start with the bombs. So, these are 3D printed uh, TPU bombs from the RCE, recurring theme here. Um, and I modified them to fit a servo. These are not linear actuated servos, these are really just basic servos that are powered by. Uh, they're not powered by, but they're the same servos you're going to find in your airlines, elevators, and your normal flight control systems. Um, e flight servo release mechanism isn't the most reliable, um, so I just decided to give up on those and go for my, my uh, own servos. Uh, now, those bombs are actually designed from Tom Hunt. If you're watching this, thanks for adding to the community with these bombs. They're a lot of fun. As you can see, they have a few uh, practice runs. Uh, majority of those came from that jet right there, the F-16. But, um, yeah, a lot of work went into that, I'm pretty sure, and it definitely is a nice uh, addition to this, this aircraft. Okay, so I now have my transmitter in front of me here. I'm just going to do a quick wing opening, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, this wing's fully open. I do have a mix set up for my flaps, and then I have an automatic retraction for the flaps when the gear go up as well. I'm not going to raise the gear, but just to kind of show you what it is, I have this on a slider on an uh, FR Sky X20S. But as you can see, when the flaps start going down, the elevator responds as well with an automatic up trim. Um, if you don't know anything about the Tomcat, this, these flaps are pretty massive, so when you put them down, it's going to cause the moment to pitch forward, or the moment to move forward and let's change the center of gravity, uh, or center of lift, sorry, and then that is what's gonna cause the airplane to nose down, so to counter that, you just gotta add some up mix for the elevators. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to increase that because the aircraft did get a little heavier, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Flight control logic, we have, we have, uh, we have the normal flight control logic from the real F-14, these are spoilers. Um, I'd have a video on these somewhere on my channel, more like a short, but, they're connected with a magnet and a push rod. And when the, the, it's flat, the magnet keeps it closed. When the push rod comes up, it pushes them open. 
That way you're getting a kind of a more scale feel for the aircraft. Let me go back up a little bit. Let's give you a demonstration here. So that's to the right, that's to the left. We're gonna apply control system check. Rudder. Um, but yeah, this aircraft is uh, it's ready to go. So I'm gonna be posting some flight footage pretty soon here. Um, and uh, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, definitely leave the comments. Um, if you want to see anything with this aircraft, let me know. I'll try to get a dogfight going, trying to put some laser attack systems back on here um, that I had earlier. And uh, we'll probably go from there. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, the whole nine yards. And uh, see you on the next one. Bye.